In this video, I'll show you how to make a simple motorized turntable for 3D scanning. It has three main parts, a fixed top plate for placing the object, a rotating middle plate powered by a stepper motor, and a base that holds all the components. The top and base plates are connected and stay in place, while the middle plate rotates independently. To ensure smooth rotation, I've added bearings that help the middle plate move more easily. For scanning, I used an iOS app, but you can choose any software. The goal is to show you how to build this turntable step by step. Let's get started. This project consists of three main 3D printed parts. The first part is the base, which includes three bearing slots, a stepper motor mount, three mounting leg slots on the sides, and a slot for a power switch. The second part is the gear plate. It has a bearing slot in the center and is the only moving part responsible for rotation. On its side, there is a mounting point for attaching a phone holder. The third part is the top plate, where the object to be scanned is placed. This piece is fixed directly from its center to the base plate, ensuring that both remain completely stationary. Additionally, the project includes a small gear that attaches to the stepper motor, three pins to secure the bearings, and three mounting legs. There are also extension arms and a holder plate for the phone. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can use PCBWay 3D printing service to get these parts. The STL files are available for free, and you can find the download link in the video description. On the hardware side, four 608 ZZ bearings are needed to ensure smoother rotation. A few bolts and nuts are required to secure the stepper motor and phone holder. Lastly, a popular hobby stepper motor will be used. We will cover the electronic components in the next steps. Now, let's start building by securing the bearings to the base. Looking at the electronics, this project uses an ESP82-66 to 66 development board, allowing the rotating table to be controlled wirelessly if needed. For the stepper motor driver, the popular UN2000 and 3 is used. A breadboard and a few jumper wires are needed to set up the circuit. To power the system, a 9 volts adapter will be used, along with a few capacitors and a voltage regulator to provide 5 volts to the development board. A circuit diagram has been shared to help you build the breadboard setup. However, placing the breadboard inside the base may interfere with the rotating gear, and loose wires could cause disconnections or short circuits. For this reason, a custom PCB will be used instead. A previously designed PCB is a perfect fit for this project. The power connector on the PCB has been updated, and the latest version is now available on the PCB Way project page. You can choose PCD Way for low cost and high quality PCBs. Also, PCD files are shared for free. Now, gather the necessary components and soldering tools. Let's start soldering. If the soldering process for the PCD is complete, take the stepper motor driver chip and insert it into the board. 
make sure to align it correctly. The notch on the chip should match the notch on the PCBs. Next, place the PCB onto the base plate and connect the stepper motor. Now, it's time to set up the power connection. A two-pin switch is used to turn the circuit on and off, but this is optional. You can also connect the power adapter directly. Since this project uses an older PCD version, a barrel jack connection will be used. However, the updated PCD version includes a two-pin terminal block for easier wiring. Cut the power cable to the appropriate length, connect it to the switch, and secure it by soldering. To prevent short circuits, I used electrical tape, but heat shrink tubing is recommended for a more secure connection. Once the circuit is set up, we can move on to programming. Open the provided source code and update the pin numbers according to your motor connections. This is a simple code that makes the stepper motor rotate in one direction. After uploading the code to the board, insert it into the PCB and power it up. On the first test, the motor stalled and made some noise. If this happens, try reversing the motor connections. You can either change the pin sequence in the code or simply flip the motor connector. Now it works. The motor is running smoothly. Next, place the gear plate in the center. If the rotation is still smooth, attach the top plate as well. As you can see, the rotating table is now fully functional and spins effortlessly. In the next step, we will explore the application side. While researching 3D scanning apps for iPhone, I came across a great video on the Through Iris YouTube channel. This video reviews multiple apps, and for this project, I chose Polycam. Since the main focus of this project is the motorized rotating table, I will cover only the basic use of the app. If you also want to use Polycam, I recommend watching a step-by-step -step guide by Andrew Sink on YouTube. After downloading the app, you can close the subscription page to continue testing it for free. In the scanning interface, you will find two capture modes. In manual mode, you need to press the shutter button for each capture, while in auto mode, you only need to press the record button at the start and end of the scan. Now, place the object you want to scan at the exact center of the rotating table. Then, mount your phone onto the holder, press the record button, and start the rotating table. The app will automatically capture and save images at regular intervals as the table rotates. You can also reduce the motor step speed if needed. This can improve the scan quality. Based on the current step speed in the source code, a full rotation captures about 60 images. Once the scan is complete, stop the recording and press upload and process in the app to finalize the scan. Now, your 3D mesh is ready. Looking at the results, I'm actually surprised by how well it turned out, even with a quick test scan. With more precise settings, I'm sure the details can be even better. Finally, the scanned object can be exported in multiple file formats. And that's it. Another project completed. If you have any ideas or feedback, feel free to share them in the comments. Thanks for watching.